This is one on one session with the Forum IS founder and director Ayush Sinha. In this session, students are asked questions to test their preparedness for the personality test. One on one sessions are not mock panel sessions. Can you briefly introduce yourself to me? Yes, sir. Um, my name is Ravish Kar. I belong to the city of Bhatinda in Punjab. My graduation is in law from Nalsa University in Hyderabad. After graduation, apart from preparing for the civil services examination, I have been working as a research assistant on an empirical study on the Supreme Court. Empirical studies on Supreme Court? Uh, yes, sir. Tell me. three good criticisms of the supreme court of india thank you so the first uh, important criticism is regarding judicial overreach which is often practiced by some of our judges second is regarding frequent adjournments which are given by the judges and also seek by lawyers a uh, third issue is regarding the increasing uh, pendency in the uh, supreme court especially because sometimes we see that the judges don't hear the cases or the judges are on vacation that is also another important criticism of the supreme court supreme court has been given the responsibility of not doing justice supreme court has said that our responsibility is not only to do justice but to do complete justice yes, under which article of the constitution does it derive this power from Uh, so article 142 of the constitution gives the power to the supreme court to do complete justice in which it can give exemplary or extraordinary relief to some of the petitioners a recent example of that can be the ayodhya verdict where the supreme court granted 5 acres of plot to the sony work board although that was not in the prayers uh, for which the uh, case came what is the reason the supreme court has not decided to hear the recent hijab controversy that is going on in karnataka so one of the reasons which the chief justice mentioned was that it was not extraordinary uh, circumstance or not an extraordinary situation which required an urgent hearing although the petitioners argued that there was uh, examination coming for the students and the students should not be able to properly give the examination but the supreme court said that since uh, the students have not been wearing hijab for a long period of time and instantaneously or right now if they want to wear the hijab that's not something which the supreme court uh should give relief at the uh, currently at the uh, moment so that is why it said that the matter can be postponed and put to a future date what is the essential religious practices doctrine uh since so the essential religious practices doctrine comes from article 25 and 26 of the constitution it essentially tries to separate secular matters or non religious matters from religious matters and in case a certain practice is determined as a religious practice as a essential religious practice then fundamental rights scrutiny cannot happen for those matters and only the restrictions given under article 26 which is public order health and morality the essential religious practice can be checked only these three conditions and not for fundamental rights violation what is the defense corridor have you heard of the term defense corridor um, sir so if i remember correctly defense corridor essentially refers to infrastructure facility within a particular area where defense manufacturing apart from other ancillary industries can be set up the aim is to provide better infrastructure along <laughs> with other logistical support which might be necessary for the defense manufacturing to happen one of the corridors if i been, if, if i'm not wrong was recently inaugurated in uttar pradesh is india very keen on a ft free trade agreement with the european union uh, yes sir india has been uh, negotiating with european union for almost a decade now on signing a free trade agreement so india is keen on signing an fta what are european concerns with respect to respect to the fta uh so there are three prime concerns which europe has shown regarding fta the first is regarding sanitary and phytosanitary measures uh the european standards are quite high compared to the indian standards and that has been a controversy with uh european union's fta with usc also second is regarding uh europe wants strict ipr regime within the fta uh and since india provides a lot of exceptions to the to our patent act and to our copyright act so that is also one of the moot points uh 
Third is regarding inclusion of services within uh, the free trade agreement. India has historically not agreed to provide services or digital services specifically within FTA. Uh, but that is something which can change since India has a chapter on services uh, yeah. with the FTA uh, with uh, UAE. Lavish, yesterday I went to the market to buy lemons. The person charged me 15 rupees for a single piece of lemon. Why are lemons so expensive these days? Uh, sir, one of the reasons is uh, the decrease in supply of lemons due to some extreme weather events which happen. Uh, apart from that, sir, I need to read more on it. I haven't been able to uh, update myself with this. Lavish, in Delhi, governments have been voted out of power because of rise in prices of onions. What is the reason? The, so the government brought certain changes with respect to the formulas, which are now repealed. The government said that the restrictions by the government itself are responsible for this price rise of onions and body. Can you explain to me why onion prices rise every few years and they go they skyrocket and what government policies are responsible for it? Um. So answering the first part of the question on the increase in periodic increase in price of onions. So the main issue comes whenever there is a uh, reduction in supply of onions. So India normally receives supply of onions in uh, during two periods. I think one is during April from Maharashtra and second is sometime around winter. Uh, but in middle, there is a slag in the amount of onions which come to the market, which lead to increase in price. Uh, the economic survey of 2019, if I'm not wrong, had argued that the Essential Commodities Price Act, which imposes under which the government can impose restriction on the amount of any commodity which can be stored and uh, can also fix the lower price and the upper price for the commodity. That is one of the main reasons behind uh, the, the increase in prices, primarily for two or three main factors. One, Investors are hesitant in setting up cold storages or warehouses because they know in case restrictions are imposed under essential pack, essential commodities act, they will have to uh, reduce the stock which they have. This also reduces the amount of investment which is put in uh, other agro processing infrastructure, for example, uh, cold houses or radiation technology for onions. Uh, and apart from that, it also leads to a situation of inspector raj, as the economic survey had mentioned. So these are the reasons which the government feels. Uh, has caused uh, the disruption in the supply of onions and the consequent price rise. Why do you want to join civil services? Um, so there are two prime factors for it. The first is the element of public service, which uh, the civil services bring with it. And I believe that that is something which I have inherited from my parents. And second is the opportunity to work in dynamic areas, especially in areas of public policy, in which I have a keen interest from my time in law school. So these two factors combined propels me to choose a career in civil services. All right, Lavish, your interview is over.